All right, so I'm going to now uh, talk about a movie review that I was planning to do. Sorry, it's been a while. I just watched it yesterday. Got it out to the thought process. It's not going to be perfectly transparent, but like I was trying to get some ideas of like what I want to express and help everyone else got the impression of watching the film. You know, I I went and checked out the results so after. It's not like I check new releases straight away to be able to deliver content. I just state that I'm I'm developing this channel, but like uh, I watched it, wasn't putting too much expectation in it, and came out feeling it turned it oh uh, it, it surpassed my expectations. So that was a pretty cool movie. So at the start of the movie, um, it gave me a little bit of a whimsical feel. Not too sure if this was going to be a remake, you know. Deploy, deploying the, the storyline onwards, but it's all new writing. It, it, it generally a prequel before Willy Wonka even forms his chocolate factory. I don't know like where they're getting the basis of it. It could be original writing. That's pretty impressive on my part, you know. And the setting of the tone of the film gives you a bit of a. I like to describe it a Alice in Wonderland feeling to it, just because like um how the the actor kind of describes himself is a sense of a magician of his. Uh, Artistry, and he has a very fleshed out, very, uh, very uh, likable character. <laughs> is the best way of summarizing, giving his backstory of starting on in relation to uh, having someone of a mother of a cook, starting out making chocolates and loving that that sweet feeling, carrying on a, a kind of like a mem memory heirloom that puts into corporation in lines of um, of uh his his goal and dreams aspirating to create his chocolate factory now a lot of these chocolates um they have a magical expression a feeling to it right so they're kind of like there's no logical explanation this is why i kind of tell you it kind of gives you a house in wonderland feeling for it uh they do something and it has a magic it, they have effects without needing to have to flesh out the backstory uh, particularly in parts of the, one of the chocolate he makes, which keep, makes people float around. Now, watching this film, I can't help but take implication of making comparison to the original Ch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I grew up watching, and I fairly enjoyed uh, at this point. So you guys could also make points of saying there could be some references in relation to the the um, uh, Donnie Dev's uh, 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 casting of the Chocolate Factory. But the problem for that is it's like I've watched it and it doesn't I don't have as much memorable key moments <laughs> having watched that film in comparison to the old one having preferred much the older version way way before <laughs> so like I'm um, for me that that movie wasn't as good as the the original one I think I forget his, the actor's name and where I take a stance is on the, his emotional fluctuation person in the character when Timothy Chalvey does this is that he does have scenes where he kind of feels a bit stupefied but not overly expressive which I felt fits in line with the character's depiction from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now um, I find that scene kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if there's a link association. If you, if you see it you, you know that whenever there was a when, when, uh, when the characters are uh, the villains who were villains three <laughs> uh, in the chocolate they start flo floating and flying which is imperatively for me one of the things that I would link into the only time Charlie in the or original movie uh, kind of broke the rules of what it was expected from when they invited the poor children to come by and see uh, the factory was a, po a promise uh, reward at the end if they were to make it through at, at completely because it's children's children tend to misbehave so <laughs> I think the implication pushed out was like when they ate the villains ate this in a flying, it reminds me of the main character misbehaving, leading on to the actions onwards. <laughs> no idea if this deep symbolism uh, are placed out there, but like, you know, kids can be a bit <laughs> kids can be a bit cheeky, right? So like even the best one which would have been uh in the depiction of that old movie, Charlie. Um so the movie has a lot of like implication that most people may assume the worst until you see the near the end you watch till the end the, these meanings stick to the meanings of the film of the context hoping that most people that uh, uh have don't understand yeah like there's implication of saying like uh, you guys are completely misunderstanding something <laughs> right 
and um, there is a lot of like uh, friendly jests, but like given the context to which it, of what's happened, can we all say it's fair game? You know, because like if you look at the work production, things have changed a lot from watching Charlie of the original Chocolate Factory to where modernization have included a popular franchise, including all, all a lot of like racial ethnicities to be included in film production and working in the film industry. You know, uh, just something to highlight so you got so you guys understand. You know, um, um, you know there was no there was no uh, uh, force uh, toxic implication. You're interpreting the same thing, but you don't look. You only look into things that you want to see. You know what I'm you, you selectively bias things yourself because if you look at a production, no, that's not the case at all. Um, let's let's talk about uh, depiction. Very whimsical character. That's why I was kind of saying, but that is the nature of the Willy Wonka, regardless, right? It is just like remembering from it, and it has a lot of scenes that are very sweet for me, and I just really enjoyed. So, um, so it is a musical theme. It starts as uh, he start uh, the movie starts with singing. So I didn't know Sean could sing, but like you know, he did a decent job for it. Uh, uh, and there are a little implication of some uh in the windows. Or I can't be sure if this is a mental implication of like some things you could look up and say like oh this person has a <laughs> uh, this person has orphan syndrome, which is I, I felt like is implication of like uh, seeing the worst of things <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I, I'll have to review that and, and make that implication. And this particular scene made me laugh. The whole aspect of the dog, you know, being included <laughs> here, but the yellow teapot as well. In, in a refreshment and just like oh okay right so it's, so there are nice smart drives that are directed also <laughs> on a running feed by a target but like I can laugh at them come on you know it's all fun and games come on <laughs> this is not uh, done in a matter that's uh, trying to like uh, um, it's not done in a matter to say that the, that the, they are uh They're testing how you're going to tolerate that uh, about of a uh, cheekiness placed onto you. Does that make sense? In a very like uh, in a very long running gag way, you know, it's just it's not like you just go in there and start being me mean to someone. No, it's just like uh, uh, you you form kind of like a you you kind of put them in a good you kind of like it's kind of cheeky. That's the word I like to say, being cheeky. <laughs> It's a lot in, my, in, my, in relation to how I like to project myself in some ways as well. <laughs> maybe maybe there's the, that implication that kids like to be naughty and misbehave or <laughs> to get the best out of people or something like that. <laughs> uh, so like uh, so I like uh, so so I, I like to continue the next part. Um, so uh. Wonka has a lot of different. Uh, I was following as much as I could, right? And Wonka has a lot of different uh, of of uh, okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of like fun things that I take it in lines. Uh, introduction of Oompa Loompas and the implication of where uh, they take uh, their origin of just chocolates or their um, cocoa beans, right? And again, that's why I said like a lot of these things are kind of like magically overtoned because like you think like you must have need more than just three or four to make a massive production of chocolate, right? But like they just make that number association. So it puts in means gags, but it's not overtoning the storyline I hope for most people to understand because the setting of the story is generally a, pre a prequel. Um, Even in Tacnus have certain uh, features. They, they're 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 quite nasty. You know, they they are rich, aristocratic, and they are trying to like put down Willy Wonka as much Willy Wonka as much as possible with a more positive demeanor for his dream and goal and uh, uh, building his own chocolate factory. Um, so like these are characters that you don't really expect from villains. You know, not all villains are a great character <laughs> characterization, right? Normally they, they can be a bit. Uh, yeah, but like there's a bit of sight overtone that uh, you can kind of feel from it. So like I, I recommend anyone to watch it if you felt you've seen these things on the emotional expressions of the their actors. <laughs> if they were able to push that through. It's like it's kind of like a third person implication to the lives like like 
<laughs> our reaction on a per person perspective on something that's us the audience can react they can appreciate having seen it in our front in front of our face <laughs> you know that whole like deadpool effect you know kind of thing. So it's, it's a nice uh, it's a nice touch you know and uh yeah so like um uh where does going there was there is more things i want to flesh out without putting too much summary or like spoiling too much i guess um There's healthy jives, I feel, of people involved in something that's kind of like uh, a gray area. But like we're we're past that point of saying that I think it's unhealthy at this stage, right? We're kind of, or at least I would hope that's the case. And um, and I do believe the character um, later on, because like Noodle in that movie um, uh, has a lot of like uh, what's it called of. Uh, it's a very, a very vital uh, characterization for uh, Wonka's, uh, what do you call it, uh, accompaniment and also influencing Wonka and in, like, his decision where he was put under pressure against the antagonist, where it came down to figure out what, when he tried to start his chocolate factory and it was sabotage, unfortunately, causing uh, the chocolate to be feeling poisonous to the families and this led to uh, a decent amount of like um, betrayal. And lots of trust in his in his creations to what he would have loved to make, which was chocolate. And like um, what do you call it? noodle? Felt noodle uh, at some point was caught in the middle of it, which also had a link to the association to the main one of the main leader of the uh, villain cast. Villain cast. I don't remember his your name is perfectly sorry. And like it had some deep meaning on it. And just like it, there was a very good fleshed out characterization in this film. Film felt very attached. Characters were all uh, well fleshed out and it, easy to pull you in. At the same time, villains here are like are not super evil. Not like like uh, they're nasty, but they're not like um, and they do play on a like I kind of feel like a Disney feel to it, maybe right? But like they're not overly emphasis on on. Uh, uh, they're not overly emphasized on, uh, on uh, what you call. <sighs> What's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> it's hard to like for me to like express this in a correct way. They're not super, um, not super complex. Their reasons for doing things are kind of petty in itself. They just like monopolization and control. <laughs> and like there, there are some like a. Uh, I still have a tone that there's a bit of humor on even a cast being recruited, true famous comedians <laughs> being pushed out in the roles of uh, key features in the film. Right from one of the comedians from Saturday Night Live, that's kind of a common see, or another comedian, uh, Mr. B, being appearance there. Uh, so like you know, just like uh, it's it's like you can maybe see the subtlety if you like watch a lot of entertainment industries being incorporated in as easter eggs <laughs> so i this felt this package felt really good it was really nice and oh god there was a lot in the same even i had to like so i do talk about like i like to like to highlight certain aspects of the film and there is a line in that film that it took me really good perfectly it projected at near the end along with the way they finished the movie which i felt was a like, one of the sweetest things or one of the most nostalgic feelings that anybody that, that, that knew about the franchise could have seen which gives me so much want to like ex push out a rating of like saying it's a, i scored this really high in terms of satisfaction <laughs> i think watch the original charlie tactic factory and then see how you enjoyed that you could check out johnny that's version but i feel like if you watch the original form, form charlie factory version you have a better appreciation of this one <laughs> so us old uh, 1990s uh, group probably watch this and probably feel like a, oh the love of the nostalgia. <laughs> so it, it is, they did a good, good effect. Like the, I think they did a good job, like evoking emotions and feelings onto the audience. And uh, from what, what I've seen the success, it seems like that's the case as well. So I I do I do want to push as much saying that the, you guys should check this movie out. This is this was a pretty fun. This is a pretty fun movie from what my expectations, which. Most I just talked to someone else. They said it was going to be a copy paste story, but no, it's not. You know, it, that's why I say it was a delightful fucking surprise. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so this is what I say. Like, uh, certain scenes, like, uh, where it's a tiger being branded, and Wonka's expression is just, like, uh, superfied, but, like, not massively exaggerated. This is where I kind of take a stance of kind of telling you guys, like, you know, I felt that was in lines with, like, her, the original characterization of Wonka in terms of, like, how he is. That's why I thought this was, uh, there was some research placement to it into trying to find ways of, like, uh, portraying the character at a decent level. Um... Okay, here's this. Okay, we're right now we're going to get talking to the lions. Lions are always uh, things that I feel can evoke a good amount of like remembrance. Something really good in, in the film can really help flesh out a characters and make you even more attached. They say something that comes in lines to uh, you feel resonates well into you as a as a person. So like the whole plot prospect of the chocolate is making. And, Near the end, he opens up his uh, gift given as a heirloom for his mother, and it says, "Let the chocolate make that the people the effect that you have onto the people you share it." <laughs> which, which is like you know, it's fucking, it's it's it's, uh, it's fucking sweet. It's just like that's the sweetest thing, you know. Pun naturally just blowing into that, and just like damn. Yeah. Uh, for the tone of the movie, this was really a. Uh, I felt this was really well written and timed. It was perfect on its uh, on its selling point. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it was a pretty impressive work. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and um, near it just at the end, um, one of the iconic son songs. Like, I think it's Cillian. No, sorry, I'm gonna look up the the actress name from the original. Gene Wilder, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. So, um, I, I thought that that ex uh, where I kind of take a stance is like, uh, uh, the song plays from, uh, his, one of the songs that most people would have loved watching, uh, uh, was like, uh, Come with me and you'll see in a world of magical creation, uh, I that song was fucking. I fucking loved it when I watched it as a kid. And this this song is just like, uh, they place it nearly at the end. So that's why I said like, you old you old school people like me watching this film, you, you must fucking love this shit. <laughs> so I, I I hope anyone else like uh, had a good effect on watching it because I definitely did. Uh. uh there's a particular meaning on Avian and Lanes of like the Oompa Loompa Blink Plays being short, and they did use or some of the old songs, as you can say, from the original chocolate factory it being expressive at this point. I definitely think this movie was family friendly, and a lot of people would watch it without seeing some of the uh, implications that were placed, uh, because it's Easter eggs. You see it or you don't see it. It doesn't damage the plot line and what the movie felt, and I feel like. This is this was like really really good job, you know. And I hope anyone else can like uh, go out there and like um, watch it and get the best of the experience as I did, because I felt like that was a really good package. So just because of the the cleverness uh, and the implication of uh, how the film felt, film nine out of ten. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nine out of ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I hope uh, I, that's as much as I'm gonna go for this movie. I did. I'm very glad that fans that uh, uh, you guys have reacted to uh, telling me what you guys wanted me to watch and how you guys uh, felt about it. Because like, I'm really glad that you, my, uh, you, my viewers, guided me to watch this. Because like, it was in my mind. But like I didn't think it was that good, but it was that better than expected. And I hope you all uh, uh, haven't seen. Uh, I hope you guys that uh, 
uh, uh, made recommendations that also get that feeling and enjoyment. Uh, again, comment on the videos what you felt some of the things that you saw, whether you felt there were any Easter egg gags or not. Uh, you know, they're fun. And, you know, again, you, the more, if you put more reactions on the films of like what you watch, uh, it will incent me to like kind of like find ways to engage with you guys in a way that I feel like uh, it's kind of uh, makes you feel good about having gone watch and like really wanted to get into films. You know, I was going to do some prize money, but so uh, unfortunately, the last one didn't turn out so well, even though I put then. But like, again, the more you react to to something, uh, the more we can entice like that enjoyment of just like loving films. Okay, <laughs> so I think that's as much as I want to express. I felt like if I could really put more thought into it, it would have, I could have structured this better in lines. Um, I'm glad the over emphasis on the movie was targeted directly towards Wonka and specifically, but um, because like it's a because I feel since this is a prequel for uh, Breaking In Charlie, and the side cast of Oodle was pretty decent as well. Um, she, she's a very strong character. I'm trying to like flesh out a bit more from what I can recall at this point, which were impressive, but like she kind of acted as a kind of like moral support for the character. And again, she had an attachment to the character where the villains were taking a stance, being able to understand as well. Uh, some of the actions that Wonka was doing uh, was that link association that they thought this uh, that she had some responsibility of some action being put out because they wanted to keep Wonka down. Does that make sense? Wonka should have uh, did they did not want Wonka to be successful as they were monopolizing the chocolate <laughs> industry at that time. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope anyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me. Uh, just exp be very expressive about this film, and uh, I hope you guys uh, have a great. Uh, week uh as i push up more kind of self projects and i hope you can kind of like uh you know just this is this is why i this is a good portion of like where i liked having uh where i like films this is a nice kettle you know <laughs> this is like it's like a nice feeling to just zone out after you have to like do things like maybe you're maybe your stuff you need to get through like are a bit boring it's good it's a great way of just feeling uh being able to feel stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Bye. Hey everyone, thank you for putting the effort to watch uh, the effort I placed on making something of an entertaining video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's not for us, but like I really would appreciate any uh, uh, contribution and support you give to this channel as it gives me more motivation and uh, more incentive to enjoy more uh, video creating and, and uh, content creation. Uh, if you find that the content uh, drifts away at any point, you can always subscribe. It's no big deal. Again, it doesn't do. It doesn't mean much. Uh, it doesn't take much from you, and but it means a whole bunch of me. And it feel it would feel great if you were just reward my efforts of trying to be, uh, you know, positive and contributionary. Thank you so much. Bye.